Hello everybody, I'm B. Germain, aka The Terrible Australian, and welcome to the sixth edition of my 2012 Melbourne International Film Festival video reviews. And for this one, I'll be reviewing the horror remake, Maniac, starring Elijah Wood, and as well as the new film from Michael Haneke, the Palm Door winning Amour. Uh, first up, let's talk about Maniac. Now, the film is a remake of the 1980 uh, slasher film of the same name. Now, I have to admit, I still haven't seen the original uh, Maniac, so I can't really uh, compare how this new one is similar or different from the old one. So, basically, I'm just looking at this film as a standalone. So, but it tells the story of a young man by the name of Frank Zitto who happens to also be a serial killer and he goes around stalks women brutally butchers them and then he scalps them in a very horrible fashion and then one day he meets this um, artist by the name of Anna who is played by Nora Osnando which I'm <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm butchering the um, the young actress's name um, and he decides to try to form a relationship with her, but at the same time, but at the same time, he's trying to hold back his serial killing urges. And basically, the film follows uh, him trying to do that. And this film is very dark. It is um, very violent, very intense and creepy and Elijah Wood does give a really creepy performance as Frank. Um, if you thought he was creepy in Sin City you ain't seen nothing yet. He is just absolutely insane in this film and he really goes with his character 110%. Also what makes this film different from most of its genre is that the film is shot entirely from Frank's point of view. Basically, everything he sees, we see. And and during a couple of times during the course of the movie, when he, uh, you'll, when he looks into a mirror or a window, you'll we see the character of Frank. But for for pretty much the entire film, we're seeing it from his eyes and. And I can understand people seeing that as a bit of a gimmick, and, and I wouldn't, and I'd be lying in a way if it wasn't. Um, but I actually think it really adds to the film. It really puts us into the mindset of the character of Frank, and as well as has how we experience uh, how he views the world. And it also makes some of the the skip the like the murders that he's commits uh, feel very voyeuristic and really um, horrifying as well. And also, he also has moments where he, where we go in his mindset, how it affects him psychologically. We see like uh, hallucinations and other aspects that affect his mind and we see that through his eyes and I think, and the film does that extremely well too and um, like, and also, there are a few times in the film where you actually do see Frank, like we're not in his point of view anymore, we actually see the character, and that's during um, sort of scenes that are during either um, sort of fantasy sequences that he has in his mind, or sort of halluc hallucinations or dream sequences, and like I said, I think the, the movie really does a good job of really putting us in the mindset of this character and um, if I had to think and what also is great about the film is that visually it looks fantastic and the cinematography is superb and the film's score is absolutely terrific it it's sort of that uh, sort of 80s electronic sort of synthesizer score and it, it works brilliantly in this film and I, I'm and I have to admit, I think, um, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but when I was watching this film, I kind of feel a bit of a drive influence in both the visual look and also the, um, 
the score as well because if Drive was one of my favourite films from last year and that movie had a very specific and unique uh, look and feel and as well as score and filmmaking and there are elements of that in this film I don't know if that was intentional or not but um, and also the fact that the film is set in Los Angeles uh, kind of adds to it as well I don't know if that like I said before I don't know if that is deliberate but but if it is nonetheless it does work and it actually and I, I was saying to um, my podcasting co-host uh, uh, Super Marcy this film to me is if Drive was the art house equivalent of an action movie Maniac is the art house equivalent of a slasher movie and this film is full on art house like it, there's no doubt about it there's a definite uh, giallo influence in there as well and a definite European feel and I can understand people definitely not liking this film because it is a hard film to watch at times and the film, and, and this is one of sort of my um, negatives about the film, is the film can get a bit self-indulgent at times, which I have to admit can be a bit, um, a bit frustrating on occasion. But uh, overall, it's a really solid remake, and I definitely have to check out the original now at some point just to see how different they both are. But um, I definitely reckon, I definitely, if you're a big horror fan like I am, I definitely say it's worth a watch. I wouldn't say I loved it, but I did admire aspects of it. And, and overall, I think it is a solid uh, uh, horror film. And it's worth it alone just to see um, Elijah Wood's great performance. So overall, I give this film a rating of, out of five, uh, three and a half stars. Now onto my next film, Amore, which is the newest film from director Michael Haneke. And a couple of months ago, this actually won the Palm d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. And after watching this film, I can definitely see why. The film tells the story of an elderly couple by the names of Georges and Anne, who are played by, and forgive me if I butcher their names, um, Jean-Louis Trinigand and Emmanuel Riva. And they both live in a small apartment in Paris, and they're deeply, madly in love with each other. But one day, their love for each other is truly tested when Anne suffers a devastating stroke. And afterwards, George decides to become her carer full-time. But as time goes on, and Anne's condition deteriorates, George sort of becomes to the realisation that Anne will never get better and this is such a beautiful film and I think and I, I have to admit I haven't seen many uh, Haneke films I've only seen four prior to this one I've seen both the original and remake of Funny Games and as well as Cache or Hidden as it's known in other places in the world and also his last film The White Ribbon which was a really great film but for me, I think Amour is without a doubt the best film I've seen of his films so far. Like I said, I haven't seen everything, but of what I've seen, this is without a doubt his best film. Um, it's such a beautifully made film. If there's, if there's a way I could describe this film, I would definitely describe it as quietly powerful. And the reason for that being is, even though this is a type of story that could easily have been very sentimental or basically a tearjerker, um, Haneke brings a lot of um, humanity and honesty and truthfulness to this story. And he really captures uh, realistically what it is like for someone to have suffered from a stroke and also to deteriorate from that as time goes on and as well as what it's like to take care of someone like that and it feels real it feels very honest and the performances from both um, Trinidad and Reba are just absolutely brilliant their, their performances are just completely fantastic and also heartbreaking as well as you're seeing this couple go through this traumatic event in their lives and 
And Haneke's direction is just absolutely, just absolutely terrific. He, you can definitely tell that this film is made by someone who is a master filmmaker, and because every single scene and every single shot is just masterfully uh, done. And definitely of all the films that I've seen of his so far, it's definitely his most emotional. Um, it doesn't, not to make, to be negative on his other films because of what I've seen of them so far, they're all really good films. And But there's always been sort of a, a, a cold distance with his films. They're not as emotionally involving as they should be, even though what even though they still end up being quite engaging, but you kind of get um, emotionally invested in the story and what is happening uh, to this couple. It's just, and I was just moved by the story. I, I, I will admit, I, it didn't make me cry, but I was still moved by it nonetheless. If I had one negative thing to say about the film, I feel like the film, the pacing can be very slow at times but a lot of Haneke's films are like that but it's more noticeable here and I kind of feel like with a story like this it didn't need to be over two hours it could have easily have been a little bit shorter but or at least the pacing of the story could have been a bit more but at the same time I can understand why he sort of gave this film that slow burn feel because he wants us as the audience to be slowly get involved with this story and the lives of these two characters but it's a film I definitely want to see again like at the moment I wouldn't say it would be it would make my top 10 of the year but who knows I may love it even more on my second watch but as it is it's still a terrific film I highly recommend it and especially uh, just for the performances, for the the screenplay, and also for Haneke's direction. It's just a, a terrific film. Out of five, I'd definitely give it a solid four and a half. Um, it may go up on repeated viewings, but at the moment I think four and a half is definitely the best rating for it. But I will say, after when you watch this film, it's definitely a film that lingers with you long after you watched it because it, it's just so powerful but done in a very quiet and subtle way. I hope everyone enjoyed this sixth edition of my 2012 Myth video reviews and keep a look out for my seventh edition of this series in which I'll be discussing documentaries The Imposter and the Oscar winning Undefeated so keep a look out for that one and I'll see you all later. Bye.